We live the reality of an administration has moved in the opposite direction, making domestic oil and gas production far more difficult, not easier. Since the tragedy of the BP disaster, we've only have had seven deep water exploratory permits issued. Seven issued compared to a comparable period before the disaster, 68. So about 10 percent. That is encouraging offshore oil and gas exploration and production? I don't think so. Since that disaster, the working rotary rigs in the Gulf has fallen dramatically from about 55 to 25. It's been cut in more than half. That is encouraging offshore oil exploration and production? I don't think so. We need to change the policy that is virtually shutting down the Gulf and stopping domestic energy production. Seven deep water exploratory permits is not adequate. Seven, as I said, is roughly 10 percent of the rate that existed before. Of course we need to make changes, and we have. Of course we need to learn the lessons of the deep water horizon explosion, and we have. But seven, again, is roughly 10 percent of the previous rate we need to do far better. We need a new energy policy, not a restated policy, not same old, same old from the last two years. And we need a policy that does many things, including harnesses and accesses our enormous abundance of energy resources in this country. You know, Americans are not used to thinking of ourselves as energy rich, but we are. And nonpartisan, non-biased sources like Congressional Resource Service says, Research Service says that we are the most energy rich country in the world, bar none. The only country coming close to us is Russia in terms of our vast array and amount of domestic energy resources. Now we're out of the habit of thinking of ourselves that way for a simple reason. The United States Congress, and this president in particular, has taken 95 percent of those abundant resources and put them off limits under federal law. No other energy-rich country does anything like that. We continue to do it, even with the price at the pump rising so dramatically. We need to stop that. We need to access our own richness, our own resources to take care of ourselves. And that's a big part of the energy plan we need, which unfortunately was not part of the President's blueprint for a secure energy future unveiled today, restated today at Georgetown. Many colleagues will join me tomorrow in introducing a bill that lays out that new energy vision to unlock the enormous potential we have here at home. And the bill is called 3D, the Domestic Jobs, Domestic Energy, and Deficit Reduction Act of 2011. I'm honored to be joined by between 20 and 30 colleagues, the list is still growing, will formally introduce that act tomorrow. And this is an act, a bill aimed at our domestic energy resources, unshackling that potential, letting us get access to that enormous potential for our domestic energy and with it, great U.S. jobs, jobs right here in this country, and deficit reduction. So many of the primary challenges we face find their nexus in energy. Again, energy independence, self-reliance, which we need now more than ever, particularly with unrest in the Middle East. Secondly, jobs. We say we're trying to do everything we can to come out of this very tough recession, but we're not because the U.S. energy sector has the potential for enormous job growth. And again, we've taken such a large percentage of those resources, 95 percent, and put them off limits. And deficit reduction, along with producing more domestic energy, would come tremendous revenue to the federal government. After the personal income tax, this is the top source of federal revenue royalties on domestic energy production, second only to the personal income tax. So again, why don't we solve all of these problems, energy independence, U.S. jobs, deficit reduction by fully developing, aggressively developing our U.S., our domestic energy sector.